okay. Uh, so uh, I'm Aina Pontén. I'm CEO of Leapum since uh, late uh, 2016. And we are a biopharmaceutical company located in Umeå, and we have our roots in research from Umeå University. And we have a bold mission. We want to fill the gap and provide a better life, qual uh, quality of life to millions of people suffering from chronic inflammatory diseases. And the reason we can have this uh, ambition is because we have identified a completely unique target molecule for treatment of these inflammatory uh, diseases. And to illustrate that, we have um, an example from an animal model. Arthritis is, is a disease based on inflammation. And this very well-known uh, collagen-induced arthritis model, we exposed mice to a, give them collagen and they develop then arthritis, just as expected. But if you have mice that are genetically modified and deficient from the target molecule BSSL, they're protected from developing arthritis. This is interesting. Arthritis is, uh, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, typically the physicians, uh, they make the uh, diagnose, diagnosis by scoring. So the, the, how swollen are the, the joints and, and stuff like that. But it's also possible, in this model, it was also possible to monitor and quantify a biomarker called COMP. So it's a protein that is released from the cartilage when, when, it's, when it's destroyed. And as you can see, the, 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 the mice that are deficient from BSSL have s significantly less uh, destruction of the cartilage and uh, obviously then of the arthritis. So based on that, the founders of LEAP um, proceeded to, with the idea, would it then be possible to block this protein BSSL with an antibody and thereby inhibit the arthritis? And what you see here is from a model called pristine induced arthritis and when the rats here receive an antibody directed toward the BS cell, these have significantly less arthritis. And there are two curves there because there were two different routes of administration, both the subcutaneous way and uh, interperitoneal way. So proceeding with these ideas, the, the LEAPEN was founded and we started the process to develop a fully humanized uh, therapeutic uh, antibody. And, and that was finalized in two, uh, 2020 and it, the lead candidate is SOL116. Then we could apply for patents, so we have a priority and we expect them to have patent protection until 2040 for the product. Before that, before that, we have granted patents for this method to treat arthritis by blocking this BSSL molecule, and that is expected to last until 2030. And you cannot do all this work <coughs> and develop a lead candidate without a, a great team. And we have, of course, five uh, employees. We have a lab uh, capacity in Umeå, and we have specialist on all the positions in a team uh, depending on consultants. And these are people that are very dedicated and motivated and, and also most of them also took the opportunity to sign on warrants in LIPM in the beginning of the year. So we have an excellent team to continue the process. And now we're looking into our market opportunities. We have a great asset in the, in the antibody and our main indication is rheumatoid arthritis. We have selected that because we have a lot of preclinical data, there is a very high medical need. Then we have expanded indications that we can consider to proceed into clinical trials later on, but we have also a range of indications that are related to chronic inflammations that we intend to explore in the preclinical side. And these indications is, are huge. I mean, if we look onto the market, all these, all these indications is probably $600 billion uh, or something. So we cannot proceed in all these, but we can do preclinical work to get more data on some of these and actually have that as a platform for partnering with others. And that is what we intend to do. But we, if we look into the rheumatoid arthritis market, the dominating drug is anti-TNF biologics. 
Humira, for instance, was for very long the most selling drug in the world, 20 billion US dollar a year, and that is an anti-TNF uh, antibody. Over the next year, it's expected that the biosimilars will take market share from the original uh, anti-TNF biologics, but the market will still grow. So the generica will not destroy the, this market. It will still have a high value. However, these generics, the biosimilars, they are also anti-TNF drugs. So they will have the same limitations. And the limitations with anti-TNF uh, uh, biologics is that you have 30% non-responders that are not helped at all. And less than 40% of the patients have 50% improvement in six months. There were a lot of hope for a small molecule drug called JOK inhibitors, but over time, more and more uh, uh, side effects have been discovered, and recently FDA issued a new box warnings so on these drugs. So clearly, there is a need for an alternative mode of action. Uh, SOL116 will provide that, so we have good reasons to believe that SOL116 have blockbuster potential. Now we are ready to start clinical trial. We will start clinical trial during this fall, which means, of course, that we have a cell line, we have a master cell line, we have a manufacturing method, we have uh, TOX program data, we have nice preclinical data. But the protocol says we have to do a safety study. So this is a phase one study. The individuals get only one dose, uh, and we monitor safety and the pharmacokinetics of SOL116. But fortunately, and thanks to a great team, we managed also to include one group of RA patients in this study. That means that we have, we have the option to have an explorative endpoint where we can monitor uh, the target molecule, BSSL, we can monitor pro-inflammatory biomarkers and compare healthy volunteers with RA patients, and this will be very helpful for us in the design of forthcoming studies. It's worth then to remember that of all drugs in this field, autoimmune field, that enters into a phase one study, around about 22% of the biologics actually get the market approval, while for small molecules, it's around about 5%. So there is a much higher probability for a biological to get the market approval once it gets into the clinical stage. So our most important asset is SOL116, and we in intend then to exploit this. First of all, we continue with the clinical program, m move on to proof of concept in the indication rheumatoid arthritis. But in parallel, we will continue to, and we will intensify the preclinical work to explore mode of action and to explore more indications as I uh, showed you just a moment ago. It, because the reason for this is that we can easily do additional preclinical studies, relatively cost efficient, and get more information on the other indications that we have good reasons to believe that uh, SO116 will work in. And equi equipped with these, we will also focus on partnering. And partnering uh, for joint development, in particular for clinical studies where others have much more resources and much more know-how about the indication for clinical studies. And also we believe that having a discussion, starting collaboration, that is something that in the long run will also give us a lot of business opportunities. I'm very proud of the shareholders. We had 49 shareholders until April last year when we were listed then on NASDAQ First North. Now we have around about 1,500. Uh, and uh, they are uh, really, uh, the original uh, shareholders are really supporting the company, have been all through. Uh, but in, among these are also the founders. So the founders, including the management, have around about 20% of the ownership. And I, actually, I have increased my ownership this year. Uh, so why have I done that? Yeah, well, there is a very high medical need. And there is a need for an alternative mode of action. 
our target molecule BSC, BSSL is unique and we will provide an alternative mode of action with our, with our uh, antibody SOL116. And all this is done for a huge market. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for a nice presentation. Um, I'm just wondering, you're targeting only one pathway. So is that then enough to really ha have an effect or is it as an add-on to the other therapies or you're just looking at mm -hmm. single I, will, uh, 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 that, I mean, that's a good question. Uh, we, we, have, we, we believe that the PSSL is upstream the other uh, targets addressed today, TNF-alpha for instance. Uh, then we don't know if it will be sufficient to only block BSSL. But the inherent problem with the anti-TNF drugs is that they suppress the immune system, and that is dose-related. So if you, if you have this situation that SOL116 isn't sufficient, but it, it provides an effect, then you can imagine that it could be an option for combining and then you could use a lower dosing of anti-TNFs, having less risks of uh, anti-antibodies, less risk of side effects because of suppressing the immune system. Uh, so th even if it doesn't provide a full effect, it could be options for combinations. And uh, why doesn't we think that SOL116 uh, SOL should also be suppressing the immune system? Well, we have seen that with these uh, uh, knockout mice, the knockout mice that are deficient from the BSSL molecule, they actually live and are just as healthy as wild-type mice. So for that reason, we don't believe that suppression, uh, blocking BSSL will suppress the immune system as much as these anti-TNF drugs. However, this has to be shown in clinical trials, of, of course. So I'm wondering, do you, will you have to raise money in the next year, or do you have enough to do no. everything you're planning? Life science companies never need to raise no, money. No, you never need money. <laughs> you're all good. <laughs> now we had, uh, I mean, we have, we, we presented a clear financing plan uh, last spring when we had our listing, uh, and uh, we have also communicated this year in in all uh, quarterly reports that we will raise more money before we start clinical trial, uh, and that's still true. Okay, and uh, you mentioned in your presentations that there are challenges with biologics compared to small molecule drugs, but could you explain a bit more how that affects your company? Uh, I wouldn't say the challenges with the biologics, uh, because the, the for... for um, in the development, there is a challenge that it's much more complicated to develop a biological drug like an antibody, because you need to train cells to produce the antibody, and you need all the process to, to have them grow and to produce the antibody and purification and stuff like that. And, and once you have established your master cell bank, then you have the so-called factory for producing the antibody. So that process is much more complicated than synthesize a small molecule. Uh, so you, you need to be quite sure before you start this process to develop an antibody. Okay. On the other hand, once you have done it, then you have something that is much more selective, uh, considerably less of side effects compared to the small molecules. And, and that is probably the reason why more biologics get market approval than small molecules. Uh, so, uh, and and if you look, there is if you look on the on the FDA data, the number of antibodies in in all uh, areas uh, that uh, that seek market approval are, are growing rapidly. And among the ten most selling drugs last before the pandemic, we had the mo among the ten most selling drugs, five of those were uh, anti-TNF biologics, and. All of them were introduced before 2015. So it's rather somehow old technology that is actually dominating right now. So uh, I wouldn't say that, uh, I think it's a benefit to have a biologic actually. Okay.
So last question, a bit more open. What's uh, the mo your most important targets to achieve in the following year? Yeah, absolutely, to initiate and finalize the phase one study. But equally important is to, in parallel, uh, explore more indications for SOL 116, because data on more indications is the tool. The, the, the team, the scientific team of LIPUM, that is, they provide me with the tool to discuss with, with the pharma companies of collaborations in different kinds. And that is, in the end, what should lead us to business opportunities. Will the drug SOL116 reduce inflammation in the body in general, or is it specific to arthritic joints? No, we, we really believe that it has applicability in many different types of, of chronic inflammatory conditions. Uh, I mean, we have seen that there are elevated levels in patients having inflammation in the liver. We know that there are elevated levels in, uh, in uh, atherosclerosis, atros 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 and we have uh, more recent, this has been communicated earlier, but we have also more recent data on other inflammatory uh, diseases, related uh, diseases as well. So absolutely, B cell plays a role in many different uh, uh, diseases, that's clear. Thank you. Thank you.